In this video, we're going to take a look at last week's Hot 10 from Key Collector Comics and see which books are good buy, sell, or hold. Stay tuned. Bryce Comics. Before we get started, we have a live sale this Friday, March 25th from 3 p.m. to 8 p.m. Pacific time over on my Instagram page at Bryce Comics. That's 6 p.m. to 11 p.m. Eastern time. And we're going to be joined by Skeleton Key Comics. I'm so excited that Tony and Sammy are going to tag team this thing and call claims for this live sale. If you're not following them, uh, make sure to go give them a follow over on Instagram and YouTube. Some awesome content. Great members of the community and I'm super stoked that they're going to join us on this live sale. Also, we're coming up on the last chance to enter the March giveaways for my YouTube channel and my website newsletter. Um, if you subscribe to the channel, comment on this video and like this video, you're entered to win that first appearance of Beta Ray Bill. And if you sign up for the newsletter at BriceComics.com, you're entered to win the first appearance of Jubilee. So every week, Key Collector comes out with a hot 10, which shows the most notable sales for blue chip keys in the comic book market. And it's a really solid list to stay up to date on to see trends in the comic book market so you can make more informed purchases in the future. And that's exactly the point of this video is to take a look at these books, see what is a good buy, sell, hold opportunity and apply those to future purchases so that you can um, use this hobby to fund itself and collect what you love, which is what this channel is all about. Comic book investment speculation with tips on how to have this hobby fund itself. So with that said, let's jump into the computer and take a look at the list. All right, so here we are on Key Collector on last week's Hot 10. And number 10 on the list, we had Doctor Strange number 169, uh, which was formerly titled Strange Tales. So really, it's like issue number one for his first solo titled Doctor Strange issue. Um, it's the origin of Doctor Strange retold. It's the first appearance of Charles Benton, who later becomes Asmodeus. And it's this awesome Doctor Strange cover. We have record-breaking sales in several different grades. Not huge increases, but steady increases. And what's significant about this is an 8 selling for 1100 even though it's only up 7%, is that this 1100 is way higher than anything in history. So it's like, yeah, these record-breaking high numbers are sustaining, and that's because everything Doctor Strange right now is super hot. It's just going to get hotter. I have a feeling that this movie, when it comes out, is going to be one of those movies that prices continue to go up after the movie comes out. In a lot of cases, the best time to sell your book for a, a, a movie is when the trailer comes out because that's when the hype is the, the, the highest and then the movie comes out and then it kind of just comes down from there. But sometimes a movie comes out where the movie is so good that the hype continues to go up. And I think that might be what we have coming with Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. It is gearing up to be such a blockbuster, such a crazy, just off the charts MCU movie that I think the prices are going to continue to go up for Doctor Strange and then inevitably they will come back down. They will correct as the next big thing comes and starts vying for our attention. So number nine, we have Fantastic Four number eight. And this is the first appearance of Alicia Masters, the first appearance of the Puppet Master. And a 7-0 had a crazy strong sale, $2,040 up uh, from 942, over 100% increase from just April of last year. And you know, this one is interesting because it's an early Fantastic Four book, and I am a huge Fantastic Four fan. The, va the vast majority of books in my personal collection are Fantastic Four books, especially those early issues. But this early issue in particular is one of the Fantastic Four books that I have always been able to pass on, and I probably will never own because it's the Puppet Master. I'm not sure there's a ton of potential for the Puppet Master in the MCU. I mean, if they did do the Puppet Master in the MCU, they would have to like totally retcon him you know like change it and that's not out of the question i mean they can come up with a they can make anything cool you know so they can make a cool version of the puppet master but i think that they would probably just use some of the better source material rather than go for something like this the cover in my opinion it leaves something to be desired i'm not a huge fan i've always been able to pass on this i think there's better options for fantastic four keys right now than this one but at the end of the day it's fantastic four number eight i mean it's a, a sub number 10 Fantastic Four. It's a it's a great, you know, Silver Age book. Um, I just think there's things with better potential. 
Strange Tales 126. So this is the first appearance of Dormammu, the ruler of the Dark Dimension, the first appearance of Clea, the future wife of Doctor Strange, but she's unnamed in this issue, and the first time they use the phrase by the hoary hosts of Hoggoth. And this book, I think, has huge potential. The problem with this book is there aren't any high-grade copies available. I've been in the market for something like a 9.0 or above for, I don't know, the last six months now, um, and I just haven't found anything come to market. People are holding on to this book tight, but you just don't see high-grade copies come up for sale that often. Certainly nothing has come up for sale since this rumor in January for Charlize Theron being cast as Clea, and like I said, when it gets confirmed and as she comes on the screen, this book is just going to go up and up and up. But um, all you can find right now is those low-grade copies, 505, 5.5, 6.0, There's plenty of 4.0s, 4.5s out there, but those higher-grade copies are far and few in between because collectors are holding onto them tight. They're no dummies. They know um, that now is a terrible time to sell this book. Hero for Hire, number one, the first appearance in Origin of Luke Cage, the first black superhero to headline a title in mainstream comics, and Project Power was Super Soldier Initiative, also known as Weapon 6, that granted Luke Cage invincibility. This is also the first appearance of Diamondback, Comanche, and Shades, all characters that have made their debut in that Netflix special, and Disney Plus actually just picked up the rights to that show. We may see a little slight increase in interest for all of those properties that were just picked up by Disney Disney Plus, all of the uh, Marvel series that were on Netflix are now on Disney Plus. Maybe just a fresh set of eyes on all of those. And I do think that all of those series, The Defenders, Luke Cage, Iron Fist, Jessica Jones, all of those Netflix Marvel shows that came out years ago, they have huge potential to be redone by the MCU. It's just such great material. I think that it's likely, this is definitely one that's like on the short list of shows or movies to get redone and reintroduced in the MCU is Luke Cage. And again, this book is just one that I haven't seen anything above a 9.2 come up for sale in a long time. I've been in the market for a 9.2. I was in the market for a 9.2 around two grand and it just started inching farther and farther and farther out of reach and it's obviously not coming back down. So I think I'm just gonna let this pass. A little too rich for my blood to get in at this point just because I remember how cheap you could get a 9.2 copy um, a couple years ago. So. Um, but I think this is a great investment. I think that this book has tons of room and potential to grow even farther into the future. And as you get into those higher grades, they're just harder and harder and harder to come by because of the dark cover. Savage Tales Magazine number one, the first appearance of the man thing, Ted Salas, a scientist who developed a serum to protect soldiers from chemical warfare and um, some other uh, first appearances going on here. This book is just also increasing up and up and up. I think this is highly, highly likely that we'll get uh, man thing in the MCU. There's all of these Easter eggs and rumors and stuff, one leading into the next that this thing is just definitely coming, the most recent of which being that uh, there's a rumor that the MCU is developing a man thing Halloween special. So this book, uh, you know, these high grade copies obviously are already in the stratosphere, $5,851 for a 9.6. It is a magazine size book, which kind of narrows the pool of potential investors. It just, it doesn't display the same as regular comics. You have to put it in a special box. You just have to, per, you know, make arrangements for it. I have a whole section in my PC of magazines, you know, and, and um, I just display them separately and have a separate box for it. So there is little workarounds, but you know, it, it annoys people enough to the point that there's not as much of a market for magazines as regular comic. So if you're really wanting to speculate on man thing, maybe I would suggest some of the comic book versions, especially like his first cover appearance on key collector. You can always search by character. And if, and if you just search man thing here, you'll see all of the keys associated with man thing. You got the second appearance. And then here's a really good opportunity. Astonishing Tales 13. This is the first cover and third appearance of Man Thing. So these other keys, you know, they don't have them on the cover and that goes a long way with collectors. Here you have a really awesome cover with him on the cover with uh, what looks like Kazar and Zabu. So uh, I think that this book has a ton of potential um, for being undervalued. You haven't quite seen this show up on any hot list or anything. So this might be a good opportunity for Man Thing. 
Daredevil 131, first appearance in Origin of Bullseye. And here we go. This book is just marching up and up and up. Still no confirmation. I think it's a good investment. I think that this book has room to grow. Batman 227, uh, the iconic cover inspired by Detective Comics number 31. And I'm kicking myself. I had one of these, a beautiful 8.0 copy that came in in a collection. I posted on online and it sold instantly and I instantly regret it. Um, this cover is just so incredibly beautiful, especially when you see it in person. It's just like really striking. And I was also bidding on a 9.6 copy. It went for just over five grand on Comic Link. And the price discrepancy between a, a 9.6 and a 9.8 of this book is huge. That 9.6 going for around five grand and a 9.8 I think is uh, closer to $30,000, which is recent, you know, recent highs for this book in a 9.8, but that would be a huge crack press opportunity. So this book is an homage to Detective Comics number 31. And let's say you were just in the market for Detective Comics 31, because when I, when I sold this book and started to get FOMO real bad for this cover, I thought, well, how much is the original cover in Detective Comics number 31? And you talk about FOMO, which is the fear of missing out. Well, Detective Comics 31 is von Hacketipf. Okay, Von Hacketipf is the fear of never having a chance in the first place. And the Von Hacketipf for Detective Comics 31 is real. This book here sold for, uh, if you look at, the, at GPA sales, the last sale was actually in August. This book just never comes up for sale, but a 1.0 sold for $48,000, this ratty tatty copy right here, which actually presents pretty good for a 1.0. I mean, you usually 1.0s that have like half the cover missing. This is actually a good percenting 1.0, but I'm sure that the cover is completely detached and tape and all kinds of stuff going on. So 1.0, it's a one out of 10, and it sold for $48,000. And then the next uh, most recent sale was actually a 2.5, which as you can see, just skyrocketed. It went from 56,000 to $87,000. So here's the 2.5. Uh, for $87,000. Doesn't look much better than the 1.0, to tell you the truth. And then if you were to go up even higher than that, a 5.0 sold for $132,000, but that was back in November of 2020. I have a feeling if a 5.0 of this book came up today, it would clear $250,000. And then if you look, there's only two copies recorded sales higher than that. And if you look at the census for this book, there's only 93 copies copies total on the CGC census for Detective Comics number 31. The highest graded copy is an 8.0, the highest blue label. There's some restored 8.5s. There's a bunch of restored copies. So a bunch of this 93 are restored copies. Every single grade is a single digit number. I've never seen that. I mean, this is this is this is incredibly rare this book. Like I said, it's von Hacketipf. It's the fear of never having a chance in the first place for this book. Um, but man, is this book a good investment because that iconic cover art, it's also the first appearance of the monk, it's the first appearance of Julie Madison, it's the debut of the Bat Gyro, which later becomes the Bat Plane, and it's the debut of the Batarang. All of this is minor key issue stuff, but that cover is just so iconic. As it continues to get further and further out of reach, this book is the next best thing. So, you know, if if you've got the FOMO for this book, at least it's not the fun hack a tip for Detective Comics number 31. Uncanny X-Men number three, the first appearance and cover appearance of The Blob. I, I mean, it's X-Men number three. It's such an early, early issue for X-Men. There will always be collectability and desirability for this book because people are going to want, you know, those first 10 issues or whatever it may be. I don't think we have any chance of seeing The Blob in the MCU because of the PR nightmare that would ensue of having a character like The Blob. But it's early X-Men. It will always be desirable. It's a solid investment. Speaking of solid investments, Amazing Spider-Man number 10, the first team appearance of the Enforcers and the first appearance of Big Man, characters that we likely will never see in the MCU, but it's early ASM, it, you know, issue number 10. This book is a blue chip key. It will always go up in value. And one thing that Nick mentions down here is that a 9.8 hasn't come up for sale since 2017. And back then it sold for $16,000. If today 
who knows when a 9.8 would go for, but that is something that is likely to happen in the near future since we haven't seen it come up uh, in so long. And if a 9.8 comes up to market, it's going to have crazy trickle down effects for all the other grades. Anytime you see an amazing Spider-Man early issue like this, 12 center, whether it's a key or not, if you can get it at or below FMV, I think it's a good buy. And number one on the list, we have Tales to Astonish number 100. Really interesting to see this one hitting the top of the list. It's a classic battle of Hulk versus Namor, the Submariner. And, um, you know, a 5 sold for 75, which is up 74%, but that's only 30 bucks, all right? And so, like, if somebody was to make this purchase, I don't think it's like a, a heavily weighted decision where they're checking GPA, you know, for this $30 increase. I think they just, they see it, they like it, they bought it, they got it. You know, 5.0 for 75 bucks. You don't have to put too much thought into that. If you like the cover, you're just going to buy it. Same for the 7.5. Even though it's 25% increase, it's only 30 bucks. The bigger thing that this brings up is should we be targeting um, minor key issues for the Submariner. Submariner and Namor keys are just going further and further out of reach, and they're going to continue to do so as he's, you know, confirmed in the MCU. And we, as we see him on the screen, he's not a one and done character. So I think this does bring up a really good point, And that is that anytime you can find a, a minor Submariner key like this, like the first battle between Hulk and Submariner, or the first battle between Submariner and whatever other character, if you can find it at or below FMV, I think it's a good pickup right now. And it's a good strategy is just go for these you know lesser known name or keys with him on the cover they're definitely going to be desirable they're going to be easy sells as he comes to the mcu so there you have it guys an awesome list this week uh from key collector comics don't forget we have a live sale this friday uh, over on my instagram page i hope to see you guys there and it's your last chance to get in on the march giveaways for the youtube giveaway and for the giveaway at the brycecomics.com newsletter as always, thank you so much for sticking with me to the end of the video, and we'll catch you in the next one. Bye. Bryce Comics.